This is a still image from the footage recorded by Els Van Doren's helmet camera during her skydiving venture, just moments preceding her tragic demise. Despite being a highly skilled and experienced skydiver with numerous successful jumps, this particular instance led to an unfortunate end that nobody expected, with both her main and backup parachutes malfunctioning. Initially deemed an accident, a lingering suspicion persisted, prompting a more thorough investigation that shed light to the dark secrets in Van Doren's life and uncovered a shocking revelation. This was not any other skydiving venture that had gone wrong. This was actually a murder case, and was dubbed by the media as the Parachute Murder. This is the twisted case of Els Van Doren. Els Van Doren was a 38-year-old Belgian woman married to an Antwerp jeweler named Jan de Wild, and together they had two children, Vincent de Wild and Carol de Wild. While she worked in the family's jewelry store, Van Doren's true passion lay in skydiving. Initially taking up the sport with her husband in 1994, Van Doren surpassed his interest as her enthusiasm grew. With 2,300 jumps under her belt, she was an experienced skydiver. Every weekend and on bank holidays, she devoted her time to skydiving. In 1998, she delved into formation jumping and, by 2001, became a member of an all-female skydiving team who called themselves the Divas. The team even competed in the World Skydiving Championships in 2003, but unfortunately, Van Doren had to exit the group in 2004 due to health issues stemming from a hernia. After her recovery, Van Doren opted to skydive for enjoyment instead of competing. She became a member of the Svartberg Parachute Club, and by 2006, her tally of successful jumps, as mentioned earlier, had surpassed 2,300. It was within this club that she formed a close friendship with a fellow skydiver, 26-year-old schoolteacher, Els Klottermans. Given their shared first name, Van Doren would later suggest the nickname Babs for her younger friend to minimize any potential confusion within the skydiving club they both attended. A certain gentleman by the name Marcel Summers also belonged to the same club and was acquainted with both women. The trio not only developed a strong friendship, but also became diving partners during their skydiving ventures. With time, Van Doren found herself developing a stronger bond with Marcel, even though she was a married woman. Their initially platonic relationship gradually evolved into a romantic entanglement. Her family was used to her spending weekends away at the skydiving club, and this unknowingly provided a convenient cover, which prevented her husband from growing suspicious about her relationship with Marcel. They often frequented Marcel's apartment, spending their weekends together without any worry. Little did Van Doren realize that she and Babs were not just sharing a first name, but also the same man. Unbeknownst to both women, Marcel had been secretly involved with both of them intimately. To manage both affairs, Marcel devised a schedule, allocating specific days for each woman. Fridays were dedicated to spending time with Babs, while Saturdays were reserved for Van Doren. This arrangement proved advantageous for Marcel for some period, however it would be short-lived when an unexpected twist awaited them, one particular weekend. On the evening of Friday, November 10, 2006, Babs arrived at Marcel's residence as per their regular weekly arrangement. Unbeknownst to her, Els Van Doren had decided to surprise Marcel by showing up unexpectedly that same night. Babs and Marcel had been dining together at the time, and upon returning to Marcel's apartment, they were met with Van Doren who was waiting outside his door. The subsequent conversation that took place was unknown, but what was known for sure is that that night, it was not Babs who shared Marcel's bed. Instead, she found herself relegated to sleeping in a sleeping bag on the living room floor, while Van Doren and Marcel took the next phase to the bedroom. There in the living room, Babs noticed Van Doren's parachute and other skydiving gear in close proximity. Feeling wounded and betrayed after being deceived and replaced by her friend, Babs succumbed to an unthinkable action, one that would culminate in a tragic outcome later on. On November 18, 2006, 12 members of the skydiving club, including Van Doren, Babs, and Marcel, embarked on a flight over Flanders. The plan involved Van Doren, Babs, Marcel, and another skydiver named Tom executing a four-person formation jump at 13,000 feet. 
In this formation, they would interlock hands before releasing and deploying their parachutes. As they readied for the jump, Els, Marcel, and Tom leaped from the plane as intended. However, it seemed that Babs, perhaps due to a delay or intentionally, jumped slightly later than the others. During the freefall, Babs was not able to catch up with the group, and therefore, at 9,000 feet, Marcel, Van Doren, and Tom broke the formation, preparing to safely open their parachutes. At this juncture, it became evident that a serious issue had arisen. As Van Doren attempted to engage her parachute by pulling the cords, it refused to open. Striving to remain composed, she recollected the emergency procedures during her training, and having encountered a failed parachute once before, she had successfully deployed the reserve parachute on that occasion. However, in this instance, hurtling through freefall at approximately 200 kilometers per hour, she had a mere 20 seconds or less to execute a life-saving maneuver for a successful landing. Despite her efforts, pulling the reserve cord proved futile, and the parachute remained unresponsive. With her desperation escalating, she persisted in tugging at both the main parachute and reserve cords, yet no response ensued. Marcel, who was 800 meters above, observed Van Doren, who was a mere 500 meters from the ground, and sensed that something was wrong as her parachute had still not been deployed, but he could do nothing but just witness the unfolding horror. In a final, desperate attempt, Van Doren tried to untangle the cords of her parachute, hoping to activate it, but her fate had already been sealed. Meanwhile on the ground, in the town of Opglabik, as these events occurred, a woman was outside hanging laundry in her garden. A resounding thud made her grew alarmed at what had happened. Glancing upward, she witnessed an individual descending from the sky with a parachute towards her garden. This spectacle wasn't unfamiliar, given that her residence was merely a few kilometers from the skydiving club and its landing field. While turning to resume her laundry task, the woman spotted a white fabric entangled on top of her shrubs. Drawing closer, she saw a person lying amidst the bushes. Swiftly, she called her husband, who was also in the garden attending to maintenance duties, and they promptly contacted emergency services. That person was Els Van Doren, who they assumed was one of the skydivers, but unfortunately did not display any signs of life. On the other hand, Marcel secured a safe landing spot and sprinted through the streets, frantically calling out for Van Doren and trying to pinpoint her location. Spotting an ambulance, Marcel gave chase, following it to the nearby site where Van Doren had descended. As he rushed towards her, he had to be restrained, allowing the emergency crew to approach. Upon the arrival of emergency services, resuscitation efforts were initiated, but proved futile. Els Van Doren had succumbed. Marcel vehemently insisted on preserving Van Doren's parachute untouched, asserting the abnormality of both the main and reserve parachutes failing to open. He then contacted her husband, Jan, and delivered the devastating news. Jan hurried to his wife's side, while Tom and Babs returned to the parachute club to relay the tragic news of Van Doren's demise to the other members. As the gravity of the news sank in for the club's members, Babs, overwhelmed, sank to her knees, releasing a mournful wail. Elle's husband, Jan, arrived at the club to gather her belongings, encountering Babs who volunteered to retrieve the items. He observed her seemingly motionless and noted a peculiar grin on her face at that moment. Babs proceeded towards the changing rooms, with Jan trailing closely. However, upon arrival, Babs abruptly shut the door, locking Jan out. He recounted that Babs took a considerable amount of time before eventually emerging with Van Doren's belongings. Meanwhile, at the accident site, the police had gathered Van Doren's parachute and helmet, the latter equipped with a video camera capturing her ill-fated jump. An autopsy, conducted to ascertain her state, revealed no traces of alcohol or drugs that might have impaired her functionality. Her demise was classified as either a homicide or a suicide, attributed to numerous fractures and internal bleeding resulting from the impact of the fall. Suspicions arose within Van Doren's family, pointing toward the possibility of her being murdered by someone within her skydiving club, an individual well-versed on how the parachute works. Consequently, the club members were discouraged from attending her funeral, a plea that some members, including Els Klaudermans, disregarded. The family's anguish intensified when the police disclosed that Van Doren had been engaged in a prolonged extramarital affair with Marcel Summers 
Spanning over five years, Jan, in particular, felt deeply wounded, discovering that fellow club members were aware of the affair, some of whom he considered friends from his own club membership. To compound matters, Van Doren had falsely informed her club peers that she was separated from her husband. Her funeral took place a mere day before her daughter Carol's 15th birthday. During this solemn occasion, Carol addressed her mother through a heartfelt statement, recounting the family's repeated pleas for her to cease skydiving. She conveyed the family's longing for her presence. She, however, concluded her remarks by acknowledging her mother's individuality and emphasizing that she would have been unhappy if she had to abandon what she loved to do. In response to the escalating concerns surrounding the failure of Van Doren's reserve parachute, the police initiated an investigation shortly after the funeral. A parachuting specialist, well-versed in parachute mechanics, was enlisted to scrutinize Van Doren's parachute, seeking to identify any irregularities. Swiftly, the expert discerned a critical absence, a vital component of her parachute, the pilot chute. This small auxiliary parachute usually plays a pivotal role in deploying either the main or reserve parachute. Its intentional removal was evident, signaling deliberate interference. Additionally, clear indications of tampering surfaced, notably the severed drawstring to the pilot chute, responsible for activating the main parachute, and one of the hanging straps connected to the emergency parachute. Upon reviewing the last body cam footage from Van Doren's ill-fated jump, an unidentified red fabric appeared suspended in front of her face. Not recognized as part of Van Doren's skydiving gear, investigators struggled to find out the origin of this object. They requested and urged the residents of Opglabek to do thorough checks of their gardens and nearby surroundings in a bid to uncover the red item, and if found, it was emphasized that the discovery be handled cautiously as potential evidence, as it possibly contained DNA from the individual who had sabotaged Van Doren's parachute, but unfortunately, no one succeeded in locating this crucial piece. On the Monday following Els Van Doren's tragic demise, a miraculous discovery came to light as the pilot chute was mysteriously found by Babs. She claimed that on returning from Marcel's apartment, she spotted the chute hanging from a tree during her journey between Opglabek and Genk. Rather than contacting the police directly, Babs opted to inform Marcel of her find. Upon learning of the discovery, Marcel made the call to the police, who promptly proceeded to the tree site. Upon their arrival, the police encountered a nervous, troubled, and visibly emotional Babs. However, their suspicions were aroused regarding Clotterman's miraculous discovery of the pilot chute. She asserted that it was purely coincidental, attributing it to her decision to take a different route home that day compared to her usual journey. According to her account, being stuck behind a slow-moving tractor led her to glance upward, where she spotted the chute dangling around 20 meters above interpreting it as a heavenly sign from Van Doren. Police, however, remained skeptical, as the fact that the pilot chute was missing was known only to the investigators at that point. At this point, the primary suspects implicated in the presumed murder of Van Doren included her husband, Jan, her lover, Marcel, and her friend, Els Klottermans. Police conducted searches at Marcel's residence and would later clear him as a suspect. Jan, Van Doren's husband, was also later cleared as a suspect by the authorities. Investigative efforts extended to Els Clotterman's home, where items such as her phone, laptop, and a diary documenting her emotions, as per her psychiatrist's recommendation, were confiscated by the police. Babs was subsequently summoned for questioning at the police station, aiming to obtain further information about her relationships with Marcel, Van Doren, and the events surrounding Van Doren's demise. Throughout the interrogation, Clottermans vehemently denied any involvement in sabotaging Van Doren's parachute. Instead, she attempted to shift blame onto either Marcel, suggesting he kept Van Doren's gear during her weekend stays, or her husband Jan, with whom she purportedly stored her gear during the week. Following the initial questioning, Clottermans was released and allowed to return home. However, a second interview scheduled for December 20th, 2006, saw her absence. Subsequent investigations revealed that she had attempted taking her own life earlier that morning, having taken an overdose combination of sleeping pills and antidepressants. Discovered unresponsive by her mother, Babs was swiftly taken to hospital for urgent treatment. 
in letters addressed to her loved ones before the act, she conveyed the difficulty of coping with the loss of her close friend and expressed the overwhelming stress of being implicated as a murder suspect in the case. After recuperating, Babs was admitted to a psychiatric facility where she was carefully monitored for a duration of 15 days. Having been diagnosed with borderline personality disorder and depression years earlier, this marked not her first attempt at self-harm. Marcel had chose to sever ties with her, contending that he perceived her actions as an attention-seeking ploy, asserting that she had no genuine intent to end her life. Marcel speculated that she strategically took the pills shortly before anticipating her mother's return, suggesting her primary motive was to divert attention from her alleged involvement in Van Doren's death. He presumed that the police were closing in on her, ensnaring her in her own lies. Shortly thereafter, still receiving psychiatric care, Els Clottermans found herself under arrest on January 11, 2007, suspected of the murder of Els Van Doren. Her appearance in court on January 19, 2007, resulted in the decision to keep her in custody while the ongoing investigation unfolded. Despite being asked to undergo a polygraph test, Clottermans declined, and this measure was never carried out. A more detailed investigation of Els Van Doren's skydiving equipment revealed that the parachute cords had been deliberately cut using a pair of scissors, and the individual responsible for this act was likely a right-handed person. As of March 2007, Babs had spent three months in prison, enduring extensive interrogation without admitting guilt. During the questioning, she did concede to being the sender of an anonymous letter addressed to Van Doren, asserting that her actions towards her family were wrong. Jan had discovered this letter, but interpreted it as a critique of Van Doren's frequent absence from her family due to skydiving. He discarded the letter without attaching much significance to it. However, it became evident that Babs intended this as a warning for Van Doren to bring an end to her involvement with Marcel. Additionally, she admitted to making anonymous calls to Marcel, intentionally timed when she knew he was with Van Doren and tried to intimidate them. Upon scrutinizing Babs's automatic activation device, or an AAD, investigators noted that she jumped later than the rest of the team and activated her parachute earlier, speculating that it gave her a vantage position to witness the unfolding events from above. This strategic move also allowed her to monitor the location where Van Doren's black pilot chute had landed, potentially for retrieval afterwards. In September 2008, Clotterman's lawyer successfully secured her release on bail and despite the ongoing investigation, she resumed to work in a school. The murder trial commenced on September 24, 2010, with the prosecution expressing confidence in the adequacy of the evidence to secure a murder charge against Clottermans. The motive presented was rooted in jealousy upon discovering that her lover was engaged in a relationship with her close friend. In a previous statement to investigators, Clottermans had admitted to being aware that she held a subordinate position to Van Doren in the eyes of Marcel Summers, acknowledging that she was the second best since Summers clearly preferred Van Doren over her. Consequently, driven by a desperate desire to eliminate her romantic rival and remove Van Doren from the equation, the prosecution asserted a compelling motive for the alleged murder. Clotterman's defense attorney contended that the prosecution relied solely on circumstantial evidence and alleged accusations to support their case. During her testimony, Clottermans asserted that she did not envision a future with Marcel and engaged intimately with him solely due to her low self-esteem. At one point, she even attempted to shift blame towards Carol, Van Doren's daughter, suggesting that she might have sought to retaliate against her mother for being away most of the weekends. However, despite her earnest efforts to manipulate the jury and divert blame, their judgment prevailed. On October 20, 2010, Els Clottermans was found guilty of murdering her friend Els Van Doren and received a 30-year prison sentence. During the trial, Babs, steadfast in her assertion of innocence, was placed under close observation to prevent her from self-harming again. Later on, she lodged an appeal, contending that police had questioned her in the absence of her attorney. In May 2011, her appeal was rejected. However, in June 2022, following a third appeal, and after serving only 12 and a half years, Els Clottermans was granted conditional release from prison and is now a free woman. It is unfortunate what happened to Els Van Doren and also sad what her family had to go through after everything came to light. 
Our deepest sympathies go out to the life that was lost and the grieving loved ones she left behind. If you found this video compelling, leave a like and your thoughts in the comments. Be sure to subscribe and check out our other videos. Thank you for watching.